Welcome to the BS Banking Show, Mr. Dhan Kumar. Can you give us your outlook for gold prices, given the fact that the Fed is still not done with its rate, hike, rate hikes in the United States? Yeah, I feel like uh, the gold price will uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, only increase, the likelihood is only increase. So it may hover around uh, 1750 to 1800. Uh, it is already there. Uh, this is what is on the it is on the expected lines because uh, the federal may uh, further raise the policy rate. So this is the indication here. Uh, yeah. So uh, it will remain uh, somewhere here, uh, 1700 to 1800. This is uh, our assessment of the gold price. What does it mean for gold loan availers in India? Can you just elaborate a bit on this? See, it is not based on gold price. It is uh, very, uh, uh, because our loan to value, average loan to value is uh, less than 70%. Whereas uh, the, the customers have the ability to borrow up to 75%. So that it indicates that uh, the it is the not linked to the gold price alone. So if the gold price goes up, it will it has come down in the past also. It it has come down to around 62, 65 percent. So immediately when the money more money is available, they will not avail. The reason is this is uh, the uh, the underlying collateral is very precious for them. So while borrowing. They have in mind, yes, in a three months time or six months time, I will have to redeem. So whether I have the cash flow to redeem it, that is very, very well there because this is the only loan where the collateral is a cash equivalent and it is uh, with the lender which can be monetized, liquidated in the case, in, uh, in case of even at any point of time, unlike a housing loan where the borrower himself holds the collateral security. And also even with the repossession, the selling of a, a, a mortgage product is not easy uh, if it is a uh, lender property. Here, it is uh, a cash equivalent. And that also, all the time, the demand is there. Uh, the, and the price is dependent on the international price of gold, etc. So there is a standard price. So the monetizing that an NPA is easier here. And the customer also knows pretty well if he doesn't have the cash flow to redeem it, you lose it. Rather, let us go and sell it in the scrap market. So uh, the, the, it is not dependent on gold price. It is dependent on his necessity and his cash flow. Post-pandemic, how have been your collection rate? So the uh, post-pandemic, the demand from uh, for gold loan from the middle class, upper middle class, etc., uh, it is remaining stable. But the lower middle class, which is our targeted audience uh, and bottom of the pyramid, I meant, uh, the demand is yet to pick up. It is slowly improving, but uh, it does not come to the pre pandemic level still, as far as gold loan demand from that sector is concerned. Do you think there is a case for revisiting the LTV norms for NBFC gold loans? Because during the pandemic, the Reserve Bank allowed banks to give 90 mm. LTV and they bought it back to 75. Mm. But NBFC gold loan companies were left out of it. Yeah. Now, you have the expertise to do this better than banks for whom this is just a small portfolio. So mm. don't you think there should be a revisiting of the portfolio all over again? So, yeah, the, I think so. No, the, for the banks, I don't see uh, any LTV restriction. From the very fact that some of the banks are lending even 90% even now in the name of agriculture alone. So they take this as an additional security. They lend uh, 90% or 85% uh, as they like. So NPFC's uh, restriction at 70% LTV uh, we are losing the level playing field. So that remains a fact. And I hope that uh, the RBA will look into this issue, denying a level playing field for the NBFC sector. The reason is banks are able to offer a lower rate of interest because their borrow, uh, overall borrowing cost is much less than, lower than an NBFC. 
so they can uh, lend at a lower rate whereas in bfc is borrowing rate is much higher than that and interest rate differential also will be there when these are uh, delivered to the ultimate consumer so but still uh, the customers coming to us why because uh, the uh, our target audience their average borrowing is around 50000 and the tenure of the loan even if it is granted for 6 months or 9 months or 3 months or 1 year uh, the average life remained around 3 to 4 months only so these customers for a small ticket going to a bank and wasting his day for a pledge and for redemption also wasting uh, wasting his day losing his wages for two days may not be economical for him So for those customers are coming to us. They, uh, we are preferred, but of course the banks, gold loan customers are different. They borrow larger tickets, say ten lakhs, fifteen lakhs, etc. Or uh, and but for borrow for a longer period. For them, it makes sense to go to a bank and borrow. So our BFC is the the challenge today. as far as growth is concerned is because the, the demand from their target audience is yet to come with the entry of of banks into the gold loan segment has it affected your relatively better off customers so yeah not see it is it has affected in some way but the business may not be affected the reason is is the, uh, the the largest segment the lar- no, largest lender as far as gold loan segment is concerned is neither bank nor an nbfc it still remains an unorganized lender the their number are the, the, their number running into uh, millions in india there is no, no record and because of the convenience factor they Uh, they are the largest lenders, and there is no estimate because these are not uh, many many a time accounted. So, uh, 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 but the estimate is around uh, two third lending is coming from the unorganized lender. What happens to him is lack of transparency and usurious rate of interest. NBFCs are, have been the way customers from the unorganized lender. because we are available from say from 8:30 to 5:30 even a lesser number of holidays than a bank and the uh, the appraisal everything is being done by the company employees as far as nbfc is concerned this is the advantage for us so uh, even though there is some weaning away of our half ticket customers from uh, by the banks our uh, the opportunity to grow lend and grow will not come down because the larger market is still outside and you know india is importing almost 1000 tons of gold as per the records for the past several years in india and what has come to the mortgage loan mortgage gold mortgage market is only a minuscule portion of that so the, with a more awareness created across india the taboo that was the uh, as far as availing in gold loan is concerned it will be in a related question what more can be done to monetize gold lying idle with indians yeah so if you have i will take uh, a couple of minutes of you yes sir yeah so the, there was no official estimate uh, with anybody if, uh, with authorities until we made some uh, research in this using imax and we have submitted to all the authorities as and when it was available the reason is we are the first nbfc gold loan nbfc in the country so way back in 1994 95 we got the company listed and from kerala we are the first to go on nbfc to get credit rating etc going to the market particularly for raising fda etc we need a lot of study about gold and gold loan so we engaged the gram management services imax for a study and they do, uh, did a research and uh, yeah, they came out with a report stating that the gold in the country is estimated Uh, at around 18000 tons to 25000 tons this is where back in 
Uh, so, the, uh, 2007, this was the report. Uh, so, uh, and every year, as per the report, uh, India is importing a thousand tons annually. So, what would be the estimated gold in the country? And in the study itself, uh, they have said that uh, the major portion of the this gold is not with any uh, government authorities or not with any HNX. These are the major portion is the, with the rural household. And very few, very minuscule portion of that with family temples, etc. The temples, etc. So they, these are the, why? Because uh, in the uh, olden days, when the banking facility was unreachable in rural areas, uh, they used to invest whatever surplus in the gold, and it has also become a family ritual. And also at the time of marriage, etc., etc., these are being transferred to the bride, etc. We know that what is the uh, the, the uh, this is this has uh, been treated as a store for value. Now, even when uh, the intensity density of banking has increased, the culture of storing some value in gold has not gone down in uh, semi-urban and rural areas. It is very evident from the fact that uh, the India is importing thousand plus tons uh, annually into India. Thousand, so, and these are majorly going for jewelry making. And all the jewelers are also expanding their uh, yeah, reach to even to rural areas, even large jewelers. So the scope is increasing. So even, even when uh, the banks um, uh, have weaned away some customers, NBFCs have enough headroom to be a, a lender for the common people, uh, bottom of the pyramid, and uh, uh, coexisting uh, uh, banks and NBFCs in hold on space is no issue, and each of them, uh, either of them, have good opportunity for growth. Now you have diversified into the MFI business, but given that this two sits adjacent to the community that avails of gold loans from you, is this enough by way of diversification? Yeah. So uh, we have diversified into microfinance. Vehicle finance, uh, in, including two wheeler finance and car finance, and also affordable housing apart from MSF. So, all these, uh, if you look at, are based on the needs of people. Uh, I will start with the non MFI first. So, uh, many of our customers who are from the lower middle class, they wanted to buy two wheelers, they wanted to avail a affordable housing loan. They used to enquire uh, uh, in our office whether uh, Manapuram is uh, granting such a loan, etc. So earlier we were, we were not able to give. We were we thought we we are not able to meet the customers' uh, requirement. So we should start. That's the reason why. So rather than uh, the pro uh, yeah, product centric uh, to uh, the customer centric approach, we took. And when our customers, uh, many of our uh, ladies also, lady customers, uh, they wanted more loan, etc. They, they, they used to say, we availed from this microfinance, that microfinance, etc. Then we thought, uh, yeah, it will be mutually beneficial. Cross-selling opportunities are there. We start uh, microfinance also because all our knowledge is uh, in dealing with the bottom of the pyramid. This is how we, uh, yeah, it's a sort of uh, uh, yeah, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, uh, yeah, uh, approach as far as diversification is concerned. But where does your uh, tie up with Western Union fit into the larger piece here? So, the, we have a large customer base which is benefiting us. The live customer at uh, the consolidated level is around 55 lakhs. So there is a lot of cross-selling happening from microfinance uh, to gold loan and uh, gold, uh, gold, uh, gold loan to uh, uh, affordable housing, etc., etc. And that is why we are able to grow these businesses faster uh, compared to a new player, uh, etc. So this, uh, if you ask me what is your greatest pressure, is our greatest pressure is uh, more than money, it is our customer base. Mr. Nanda Kumar, it was wonderful talking to you. We look forward to having you sometime soon again. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Gu. Anytime. Yes, I am also really delighted to talk to you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. 
For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success so high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.